Hey, this is Jeff Kay, your public address announcer for the Dallas Stars, and be sure to watch the sprightly puck right here. What's up, sprightly puck fans? Sanders here, and it's time to talk hockey. Your Dallas Stars made it to round two of the playoffs, and they fought hard. All seven games? Okay, maybe not all seven, but we'll get into that. Let's break it down. Game one. In Dallas, with the win. Roussel, second period, second goal of the playoffs. Then to cap it off with the game-winning goal, his second goal of the playoffs, his second game-winning goal in game one of the playoffs, Radic Foxa, the rookie that everybody loved. He showed up to fill a spot when an injury came up and never really left, and it was awesome. He has played well. He has represented the kind of offensive player we want our team to have every game. Game two in Dallas, we lost in overtime. First period, Alex Goligoski gets his third of the playoffs. Nobody scores in the second. Matias Janmark, the rookie that took a starting spot from game one and never looked back, got his first NHL career playoff goal. And man, did that stadium erupt. Then the captain, J.B. Ben, caps it off for the tying goal to send us into overtime. Unfortunately, it was just an ugly one. The boys get a day of rest and we fly to St. Louis for game three, where we lost again. The only goal of that night for the Stars was from Colton Sevier, his second of the playoffs. Unfortunately, St. Louis got six of them and it just, it wasn't pretty. The defense didn't do their job very well and our goaltenders were sitting on the back of their heels constantly trying to make up for plays. A lot of defense was missing, a lot of playoff level goaltending was missing throughout round two. In nil we trust. Alright, that brings us to game four in St. Louis, which was another OT game, but we won this time! First period, nothing. Second period, Radic Foxa again. Third goal of the playoffs. Then a power play goal from Patrick Sharp, making it his fourth goal of the playoffs. Sending us into overtime, where none other than the Ginger Ninja, Cody Eakin, gets his first goal of the playoffs for the win. Brings us to Game 5, back in Dallas with another loss at home. I don't like it when we lose at home. This was another single goal game for the Stars, where we lost 4-1. to one. The only goal came in the first period from Mr. Goligoski. Fourth goal of the playoffs, though. I just wish our defense would do better. I wish that Goligoski wouldn't turn over the puck so much, or other defensive players as well, but it's... In all honesty, Goligoski was the main player that we saw being the result of turnovers. We can't funnel the puck towards our own netminder. We need to keep the puck away from our netminder as best as we can, help him out as best as we can, when we can. And we didn't do a lot of that. And it came back and bit us in the butt. Brings us to game six back in St. Louis, where we got the win to stay alive. Do or die, and the boys said, let's do. And they did. And you can thank Matias Janmark for his second of the playoffs. Vernon Fiddler for his first of the playoffs. Uh, the power play goal from Jason Spezza, tying him with the captain, Jamie Ben for five goals in the playoffs. And leaving us with another game winner. Jason Spezza was key in securing our first place spot in the Western Conference for the end of the regular season. Game 7, Dallas loses, and we're out 6-1 to one in Dallas. Patty Eves got his third of the playoffs, though, and we were glad to have him back. I noticed that as we progressed through round 2, Jamie would play some games like he wasn't a captain, like he wasn't in it to win it 100%. And I don't know if that's because I really only stared at him closely when we were already down. But I think I do that because, as the captain, I expect him to do something insanely amazing to pick the boys back up. I don't know if that was because we were already down. I don't know if that was because the team had kind of given up on themselves as well. I really hope they hadn't. I genuinely hope that that performance was just from overexertion in games one through six and we just fought and couldn't stay up on our toes survive. Enough reflecting on the past, let's look to the future. 
Let's talk about these prospects in minor leaguers. All right, minor league. Essa Lindell played for the AHL in their playoffs. They didn't quite make it past San Diego in round one, but that's okay. It happens. He did make an appearance in the World Championships with Team Finland, who kicked butt, took names, helped take his team to silver. They played Team Canada for the gold. Connor McDavid was a big part in Canada's win, but Essa Lindell was a big part of keeping Team Finland alive. Got four points during the tournament. Props to you, Essa Lindell. I look forward to seeing you as a star again next year. Other prospects who've been doing well. Chris Marnett and the London Knights are playing for the Memorial Cup right now, and they're actually in the finals. He also signed a three-year entry-level contract. Kirinov, 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 Russian names, they're kind of confusing sometimes. He signed a three-year entry-level contract, and that's one more forward that we can look forward to. Wow, that was a terrible pun. With the end of seasons comes the signing of contracts, renewing of contracts, extending of contracts, or letting go of players. We have eight unrestricted free agents, which means if somebody makes them an offer and they like it, they can take it and go. Travis Moen, Vernon Fiddler, Patrick Eves, and Colton Sevier on offense. Then our defense is Alex Goligoski, Chris Russell, Jason Demers, Jordy Ben. The two restricted free agents are Val Nichushkin and Jamie Alexiak. And we have a lot of young defensive prospects who are on their way up, like Essa Lindell, Steven Johns, and Julius Honka. Offensively, yes, we have rookies who could come up and fill those shoes, like Jason Dickinson, or Curtis McKenzie, or Brett Ritchie, who I'll talk about more later. When it comes to our minor leaguers, we have 10 restricted free agents. No unrestricted free agents. Some of these names may sound familiar to you. Brendan Ranford, Brett Ritchie, Jack Campbell, Matisse Backman, Justin Dowling. The boys have put in an effort for the NHL as well, and some of these guys could really just come up in the next year or two and be big names for the Dallas Stars. That's only if we can retain them. When it comes down to it, restricted free agent, unrestricted free agent, the important thing is making the right choices for your team. And like I said earlier, in nil, we trust. Jim Nil has not made a trade that has not been completely beneficial for us as well as for the player themselves. When you really look back and think about it and process through everything, the important thing about being a hockey fan is loving your team as a whole. When it comes down to it, being a Stars fan is about the camaraderie we have with each other, history, and value. Yeah, they don't always win, but I just don't think I could ever honestly say that I've ever watched us try to tank. And I'm proud of the boys for that. That's kind of it for our season. Now, there will be Sprightly Puck episodes during the summer, and the reason this one's back in my place and not at Nikki's new place is because Nikki isn't feeling too well, so please send her well wishes on Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Go Stars! See you in the 2016-2017 season. What's up, Sprightly Puck fans? I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know it's not as entertaining when Nikki or I film alone, but make sure to click the photo for the previous episode where we both talked about round one, Click the subscribe button for more stuff this summer, including talk about our UFAs, RFAs, trades, and anything else that happens. Have a great summer.